My name is Kaylee Africa. This is Heavy Chef, South Africa's biggest and fastest growing entrepreneur organization designed to stimulate positive change in South Africa from the ground up. Now today we're talking to a man who knows a lot about influence and of course influencers, Bradley Elliott. Bradley Elliott is the founder of a digital marketing agency called Platinum Seed that creates impactful digital experiences. He is also the founder of Continuon, which is a software that uses machine learning to investigate a brand's social following in terms of a number of metrics that actually dictate whether those individuals are in fact influential. Ladies and gentlemen, Bradley Elliott. We've already seen you on our stage. Was it a year ago? It was. Uh, yeah, it was a year ago. Maybe even a little bit less. But yes. Yeah. And you were engaged in a research report alongside Arthur Goldstack. Can yes. you tell us a little bit more about this? Um, it was a first of its kind research report on nano influencership or influencer marketing. Got it. Um, using AI to understand data and how to identify influencers in social media communities across. 50 of South Africa's biggest brands and across different industries. And this yeah. was the first uh, report or uh, research study of its type that was ever kind. done? Yeah, first study of its kind using our software, yeah. Okay, amazing. So yeah. before we delve into that, sure. what is your definition of an influencer? I think someone who, is gen who can genuinely affect change or perceptions or opinions of other people is someone who could be considered influential doesn't necessarily mean that those people, they have to affect that across a lot of people, but if they have the ability to affect that change of opinion or perception, I think is a definition of an influencer. So we're all influencers in our own rights. Sure. Um, if you go to the sort of marketing definitions of influencers, you would consider you know, celebrities at the top as, as the, most, the original influencers, if you will. You then had this sort of rise of online influencers, um, maybe call them macro influencers. Got it. More recently, even in the last two years, you get down to micro influencers, which are like mom bloggers or mom Instagrammers. So they're very specifically niche focused. Like, you know, you might have someone who reviews cars as an example. Smaller followings, but subject matter experts. Yes. And now what we're finding is there's a layer below that in that brands have built, spent a lot of money building these huge social media communities. And they're actually realizing just ordinary people are influential in their own right. And how do we identify those people and actually start leveraging their power. Got uh, it. Yeah. So we, before we were rolling, we were talking about the shift that a lot of brands wanted to only be associated with mega influencers. Mm -hmm. And they have moved now to looking at what you call micro influencers, yeah, nano, nano yeah. influencers. Yeah. Are you seeing a lot more of this in the South African market? Uh, the South African market is slightly slower. Sure. Um, but at the end of the day, if, in terms of your influencer strategy, there is it actually needs to be a mix depending on your objectives, right? So people are starting to understand that with a decrease or erosion of trust and authenticity through the larger influencers, how do they just tap into normal people who already have a lot of advocacy with their brands to, to actually use them and reward them and give them the power um, to spread their message or awareness or sales or whatever the objective may be. So South Africa, slightly slower. Got it. The US um, and the UK and Europe and other countries, especially Australia and funnily enough, Japan massively, adopting nano influencers at a very high rate. Got it, and yeah. your software that you have developed yeah. goes in and will look at a specific brand's following mm -hmm. and will measure that audience's engagement with one another, mm -hmm. but also with the brand, right? Am I correct? 100% correct. Right, and what are you looking for? We're looking for which people in those communities spark action amongst the rest of the community. Which are the ones who drive a brand message or or piece of communication or conversation within that community. So sparking action is really the two key words 100%. that we're looking at right here. Yeah. 100%. Not sparking eyeballs, how many people see the message, but how many people then take action as a result of seeing that. Got it. Yeah. So I mean, let's talk to that misconception because sure. I think there's so many people that go around saying, well, I am an influencer mm -hmm. because I have X hundred mm. thousand followers. Mm. Can we break down the misconception that having the most amount of followers mm. is actually means that you're a better or bigger influencer? Yeah, the misconception is that it's a vanity metric, right? Got it. Um, so even this morning, I actually got a tweet from someone who was trying to sell me their Instagram account or get me to sell their Instagram account on their behalf. Got it. Um, because they have got a huge following. The big, the big problem is that firstly, um, if I'm putting out 
a message to that following and it's, there's no action that's taking place, yeah. what does it really mean? So nothing's happening. Yeah, people may see it, they may not see it. But if they do see it and they're not taking action, then I'm not really influential, Got it. in our opinion at least. And um, secondly, there's a huge, huge um, issue around are those followings actually genuine? Because mm. there's, you know, 17% of all accounts on Twitter are fake. Um, you know, Facebook just did away with something ridiculous like 200 million bots, as an example. People buy followers. It's very yes. easy. I could go get 50,000 followers tomorrow. There's people sitting offshore, like literally creating accounts, Got fake it. accounts. So it's a vanity metric. Uh, it doesn't hold any real value in our minds. So without using software like Continuum, people are going to be unaware if the followers are fake or real, correct? Um, I mean, listen, we don't identify whether a person's followers are, f are fake or real. There are tools that can do that. Sure. Um, what we identify is, is someone who's an ordinary person, do they spark conversation and action within your, within your social media community? And as a result of that, does that invoke further action? So I, but I have a practical example. If you, uh, we'll use Heavy Chef because we don't have Chef. Right. So if I like Heavy Chef's post that it puts out on Facebook and it shows on your news feed and you see it, we don't really care. But if you see it and you then take action, you like it or you comment or you share it, and then your friends then see it and they like it, and it. Who, who was the starting point in that? It was me, right? So I've got a sphere of influence. Got it. Um, another great example that came out of the sort of fire festival, you know, the whole deal that went on with, with influencers there. And if you watch that documentary, right at the end, they go, it took 10 supermodels to make this, this festival, you know, the, the, the hype. But it took one tweet from a guy who had 450 followers of a sandwich to bring the whole thing down. Yeah. And now he was the catalyst in that, right? So if you think about influencership, think about it on that sort of spectrum and scale. Yes, and yeah. I mean, now we're talking, yeah, I mean, we're talking about post positive influ in influencership as well as obviously the negative in that yeah. case, right? Which unfortunately for them had yeah. a greater effect. Yeah. If brands want to yield the power of influencers, how can they safely go about doing so? Sure. I think the first thing you've got to look at is, is what our values as a brand. Like, yeah. what do we value? Like, really understand that about your brand. Uh, the next thing you've got to do is you've actually got to do your homework, right? You've got to see if you are using big name influencers, who have they worked with in the past? Uh, what do their followings look like? And do they resonate with what we stand for? Um, because it really does all boil down to, and I keep on going on about trust and authenticity, yeah. and I tend to always have this theme when I talk to people, but there is an erosion of trust in the world, number one, but especially in social media. Mm. And are they authentic? Do they come across as authentic? And that's what's great about using nano influencers as part of your overall strategy, is that they are just ordinary people. They are none, the, they don't want to be paid. They mm. already love your brand. They're already sparking and evoking action. Um, and it's just very authentic, right? And, and that actually creates cut through. Got it. Yeah. I think my other question coming from a South African perspective is how do we influence the marketing or brand managers as to what real influencers actually look like? Because it definitely seems like there has been a mismatch mm. for a long time mm. in South Africa. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole, there's a joke in, at least in our business where if you want to create a big alcohol brand, just stick like uh, AKA or someone on a billboard and, <laughs> and you can go for it. Yeah. Um, but I think it boils down to education, like everything. Got right? it. We need to educate our brand managers on how to actually understand that. But that also on the flip side boils down to accountability within brands and marketing departments. So I think what's great about the rise of digital transformation is that it is making marketing departments far more accountable yeah. uh, because you can no longer hide behind vanity metrics around you know brand equity and awareness you actually have to be driving the bottom line yeah and therefore those decisions that they take need to be far more they need to be far more accountability so i think it's education on the one side but also internally yeah. it's accountability from a brand perspective so you talk about these metrics that would measure influence right yeah. or influencers yeah. Yeah. Are you okay that we delve into some of the metrics yeah, sure. that your algorithms yeah, or your AI sure. or whatever yeah, it is that lives behind these fancy terms is actually yeah. looking at? Yeah, sure. So I mean, it's, it's machine learning, which is I guess a function of AI. AI is also being blown up and hyped, so I won't I won't push the AI sure. conversation. But I mean, we look at basically two dozen factors. The one I just already explained to you is is um, you know how many further engagements as a result of my engagement does, does a piece of content get. I guess that's probably really one of the most important ones. Sure. We then look at you know um, how frequently people engage, what time of 
engagement? What type of engagement is it? Is it like you know a like versus a share versus a comment versus a retweet? retweet? Um, and is there a hierarchy in yeah, terms there of is what's better? Yeah, hierarchy. okay. Uh, trust factors like do they have a full profile? Do they have a proper like image attached to their profile? Um, so a bunch of things that we look at. Yeah. Got it. Okay, right. But basically, it's trust indicators, engagement, type of interactions, and then obviously w their resonance, how much engage further engagement they evoke. As the founder of both the digital marketing agency and Continuum, right, which is AI powered software mm -hmm. that is measuring influencers. Mm -hmm. What type of influencers would you like to see more of stepping up in the South African space? So I think around the type of influencers, I think I'll go firstly down to their values. And I think what we're seeing, and, and a hell of a lot of it, is that people are trying to become influencers. Mm. And you don't try, it's not like a degree that you go and become an influencer. You, you become an influencer through being a heavy chef. Got it. Right? You've got to like walk the walk. You've got to like, you've got to actually have done something. So. Don't do. Don't try to become an influencer, and don't try to do it just to get the money, because that's that's the first thing. So in terms of values, it's people who are genuinely authentic, who know what they're talking about, Got it. Um, who actually have a passion for what they're doing, and that that's really what it boils down to. Because that's when you are authentic, is when you actually a understand what you're talking about, and b you actually have a passion for it. In terms of what categories or industries those might fall into, you, uh, you mentioned earlier. You know, you see a lot of beauty. Yeah. Influencers and they actually are genuinely influential. They love like make they actually are trying to add value to their community by going, listen, this product is uh, not great and this one is and they're not being paid. That's what's great. They're being it's very objective, are very truthful. And those are the best influencers, the ones who who know and categorically state, sure, send me a sample of your product. I'm not gonna say no. Sure. But understand that I'm gonna be honest in my review about it. So that's that's really important. In terms of like what other industries we should look at, we should be looking way more at like guys in in education, in um, in entrepreneurship, um, in those fields that can help grow society, I think it's really, really important because they are influencing, but they're influencing more for their own personal brand sure. as opposed to uplift other people. And I think if they if they actually understood that, they'd realize that they've got so much knowledge to impart as opposed to trying to like influence to get sales, to actually influence to educate would be, I think, the type I would like to see coming up. Got it. So yeah. at Heavy Chef, we often say, you know, if you really want a big social media following, yeah. do the work. 100%. Because if you do the work and you're really, really amazing at yeah. what you do, the social media following will come. But if you start the other way, somewhere along the line, that inauthenticity yeah. is going to ensure that you fall off the rails. Yeah. And I mean, I, w I might even challenge that a little bit and say, even if you are really good at what you do and walk yeah. the walk, you may not get the social media following. And sure. that's fine because you're influencing in the real world, which I guess is really where it comes. Yeah, we were talking about influence where yeah. people on social media, there are some people that are so influential mm. that the people on social media are doing the work for them, that yeah. they don't even need to be on social media. People yeah. are, you know, re-quoting them and whatnot. 100%, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, cool. thank you so much for your time. Thank you for yours. It's been a pleasure to talk to yeah, you. you and too. yeah, we'll engage with you when the next survey on, or the next, you know, round of yeah. research on really influence next year, comes hopefully. out. Great. Cool. Thanks Thank again. you so much. And that, folks, is Bradley Elliott on the concept of influence and what it takes to be a successful. And the word authentic is key to this influencer. Now, if you would like to see an up and coming event on influence featuring some of South Africa's greatest influencers, then do go and check out www.heavychef.com. And that is Kaylee Africa, yet again, signing out of the Heavy Chef interview chair. Engoska kakhulu hamba kahle